Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Love is Blind, Sweden, season one, episodes five to eight. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching the last video. You know, I wasn't really sure if we should do this because just because people ask me to review something does not mean they pull up, but y'all pulled up. So thank you, I appreciate it. I'm gonna have my phone in my hand. I'm sorry if that bothers some people, but I need to make sure I don't miss anything that I noted down. First thing, Sweden is beautiful. Are you kidding me? Adding it to the list. Adding, uh, where are they, Stockholm? Adding that to the list, it is stunning. What the hell? I'm very jealous of the people who get to live there full time. All right, so. Amelia tells Lucas that according to Christopher, <laughs> Lucas is very enamored by Amelia. And so Amelia is kind of confused because she hasn't actually heard this from Lucas's mouth. And so Lucas is like, no, like that's genuinely how I feel, Ra -da 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 -da, whatever. In my opinion, I think, I mean, I, I guess you can be enamored by somebody and still be hung up on the physical, but they're really sweeping under the rug how big the disconnect is when it comes to the physical uh, attraction, on Lucas's end at least, you know? Amelia would be down yesterday. Amelia would have been down a week ago. But Lucas, it, it's taking a lot of convincing to want to be intimate with her. But um, apparently they, they ended up having a shower together. And then at some point they consummated their engagement. And I was like, oh, okay. All right, I guess. And then they're even making sexual jokes. So he was basically saying, um, oh, I spilled champagne on my pants. I guess uh, my thing is gonna taste like champagne later. I said, oh, interesting. All right, that doesn't really last for long, but I guess he is putting in an effort. What do you guys think? Is it better to put in an effort knowing that it's not quite there for you or should you just not engage until you feel that physical connection? Because what really sparks that connection? Is it actually doing it or is it just going to happen? I don't know. You guys let me know. So Mira, Mira and Katya, they're so hilarious. These two women have such stone cold faces whenever they're like, um, disapproving of what their fiance is doing. Mira is now moving in with Oscar disinterested. Anything he does, he's doing the whole hanger thing. She couldn't give a damn. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like you must be so exciting to want to be with, <laughs> okay? So Mira says that her mom is very tough and because they're so different culturally, he might get the, um, the very like stern version of her mom and he might be interrogated. None of that happened. None of it at all. It further emphasizes the fact that Mira is looking for reasons to make this relationship not work. Mira's own sister was saying, honestly, Mira and uh, Oscar are very similar. It's unfortunate that Mira can't see it. You're the one making issues, sis. Everybody else around you can see the potential but you. So that's an interesting one there. Christopher is delusional absolutely delusional this man okay so i wrote down what he says he says the eternal joy of my life and sometimes i think he says the eternal longing of my heart or something like that right he thinks that everything is honky dory he's like oh yeah our connection is so great we're the strongest couple here nobody's on our level we have all these deep conversations and stuff like that but when you actually ask him what's missing in his relationship it is a lot for starters he doesn't get a lot of verbal appreciation from his partner right so he'll ask for no he will give compliments to katya katya won't give him compliments in return so he's wondering do you even find me sexually attractive i don't know they do have sex though which is interesting and after sex she says thank you i'm trying to think if i've ever said thank you after like okay i don't know maybe some people do that i don't know i i don't but um 
He's like, I need you to affirm me. I need you to give me that reassurance. I need you to tell me that you are attracted to me. And her response is, if I'm having sex with you, if I'm, I'll say what she said, if I'm coming, <laughs> that obviously means I'm attracted to you. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like some people can easily get off without being attracted to who they're having sex with. It's just the feelings that your body is going through rather than, I don't know. That's just my opinion. I, I don't think that's a good enough reason to say, um, yeah. Anyways, let's move on. They have other conversations too. She doesn't want him to move to her city, her apartment. And he thinks, okay, well, I'm making all these concessions for our relationship. You're not really doing anything. He wants to split the bills with her in this apartment of hers. And they're saying, wait, was it them? Ooh, there's another couple who also had an issue with splitting bills, but I don't think it was them yet. I'll talk about the bills thing later. But yeah, she's not sure if she wants to have kids. She said in the pods, she hasn't found somebody who she wants to procreate with. And I do understand that. Some people think they don't want kids, but really they just haven't found that person who makes them want to have kids with that person. Unfortunately, even though Christopher is now in the picture, she, she still doesn't want kids. So yeah, it's a you thing. She doesn't compliment you. She uh, doesn't really affirm or reassure your relationship. She doesn't want children. She doesn't want you to move closer to her, let alone move into the same apartment. Honey, she don't want you. But if you ask Christopher, oh, everything's great. Everything's so great. Christopher, come on. Be for real. All right. So Amanda, I missed this, but apparently she is a pastor's kid. She was raised Christian. So somebody on Discord said that they think the reason why Amanda chose to partner up with Sergio is because he's the only other person who had some kind of religious ties. He, however, is Catholic, not Christian. So she's basically saying when my family comes around, religion is going to come up. Sergio thinks that it's a private matter. And it's not something that you could just tell any and everybody. This is news to me. I didn't know that. I'm a Christian as well. I feel like the whole point is to share. I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know. He, he lost me there. Anyways, the dad is very weary. Doesn't necessarily approve of this process at all. And so when they talk about religion, he's like, okay, um, are you a Christian? He's like, no, I'm Catholic. Oh, but do you believe in Jesus Christ? Sergio says yes. But then if you, if you believe in Jesus Christ, that makes you a Christian. Sergio doesn't know what he's talking about. All right. Then that brought up questions of how are you going to raise children and, and all of that. Whatever. It, it, I don't even understand why this couple is even together. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. Sergio decides to ask Amanda's dad for Amanda's hand in marriage. He doesn't say no. He basically says, well, you already have it. So what's the point? <laughs> so Sergio took that as a yes. And I guess we're taking it as a yes. All right, moving on. Rasmus and Crystalie's biggest issue that they have with each other is the fact that they have dogs who might not get along. Now, unfortunately, Crystalie has to come to the realization that she might have been too lenient of a dog parent. Her dog, I don't want to say her dog is bad. But um, her dog is her dog can be difficult. Yeah. Dog gets in fights with other dogs. Dog doesn't really listen to her instructions. And so Rasmus is watching all of this and he's thinking, mm, if you're a person who cannot take care of a dog, maybe you shouldn't have a dog. Yikes. Does Crystalie know how you feel about this? <laughs> because wow. They decide to have like this outdoor meeting with the dogs his dog is fine i think it's dino his dog dino is totally fine totally calm as is rasmus totally calm uh what's this girl's name chrysalis dog very anxious very high strung and rasmus believes it is because chrysalis is also very anxious very high strung and so dexter chrysalis dog is just emulating her behavior, her demeanor. And so he's like, okay, if you can't control yourself, control your dog, what else is out of your control? 
That's kind of Rasmus's thinking. I don't have a dog. I don't know what it takes to raise a dog, but I could see how it would be a concern in other aspects of life. Yeah. So basically she's just like, you know what? Today's not the day to introduce the dogs. And he's like, no, it's fine. It's fine. And she's just like, no, 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 no. We'll do it another day. We didn't get to see them do it on another day. So I don't know what happened there. Katya is having concerns that things are just too perfect with uh, Christopher. He is just too nice in her opinion um when she talks to his family this was so interesting to me when she talks to his family he says oh you know everybody has ghosts Christopher has ghosts in the closet what you need to do is not entertain those ghosts and actually just ignore them what do you mean what 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 what, 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 what? no 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 ignore the no what do you, what? I was like, I need to know more about these ghosts. What's going on? And why must they be ignored? Why are they stuck in the closet? Who put them there? Mm -mm. No, I have a lot of questions. I really do. That's not even the most dramatic situation here because they don't even get into that. It's actually Sergio. Okay. Chrisley has found out some information by way of the other women who were in the pods. There's a rumor going around that Sergio is expecting a child in Barcelona. The lady is about three months due. At this point, they said three months. Later on, it was four months. We don't really know. Sergio doesn't actually deny, but he says that Amanda is going to be upset when she finds out. She obviously was upset, but I'm just thinking to myself, if he couldn't adamantly deny it, I have questions. I have questions. Sometimes when I think of Love is Blind or whatever other shows and people have these loose ends on the outside, the, the vetting process is not like two days. So when you were engaging with somebody, I guess it would be six months ago, ideally, were you not in the process or were you not at least putting yourself in a mindset of, I really want to get married soon. I really want to be partnered up. Let me be serious about who I'm dating, who I'm entertaining. But you're out here getting women pregnant, allegedly, and you don't even know. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Six months out. Can I, can I be too judgmental? Maybe not. I'll give him grace. I'll give him grace. It just reminds me of Married at First Sight. There was another guy too, Chris, who was expecting a child. And I'm like, so obviously when you were going through this process saying you wanted to get married, you were still fooling around. I'm sorry. At that point, I do not take you seriously. But that's not Sergio's case, okay? Apparently it's just a rumor. We'll go with that for now. So the couples have a joint engagement party and some of the people from the pods get to come to the party. Isabel and Kimia are the first to arrive and they want to confront Sergio about the rumor. Now they are saying, hey, we're not necessarily confirming that this is what's happening. We are aware that it's a rumor. Sergio says, well, where's the proof? Who sent it? Who is saying this? They can't confirm. So then he's like, so then end of story. What are we even talking about here? And I will say, um, Chris Lee had a conversation with a mutual friend that knows Sergio as well. And apparently that friend even laughed at the idea of Sergio having a child on the way. So maybe, maybe that debunks the rumor. But we've seen situations where everybody in that person's life co-signs on a lie because of whatever reasons. So just because somebody denies it doesn't mean it's actually false. I, I, I need to see three months out if there is a child, yes or no. That would be the only way that I would believe that he's not expecting a child, okay? Anyways, Christopher is getting frustrated with um, Katya. He says that he's doing all the bending and she's not doing anything to make the relationship work. Um, I believe that Katya is looking for reasons to jump ship. I really do. But Christopher has been a little bit too accommodating. Honestly, I do believe that some people want to serve their partner. They want to be the giver and are okay with being with somebody who's a receiver, but he's compromising even fundamental things about himself in order to be with Katya. That's not a relationship you want to jump into. That's not a marriage you want to jump into if we're being for real. And I think Christopher has to open his eyes and say, okay, she's not doing anything. Like I... I'm doing everything. There's little to no effort on her end. What is the point of trying to stick into this relationship? But I think it's a situation of he just has this idealistic vision of marriage and 
sees Katia, she's a gorgeous woman. Like, why would he want to jeopardize it? If he can do whatever he can do to convince this woman to marry him, he's going to do it. So yeah. Anyways, um, Mira realizes that she too is looking for reasons to leave the marriage. She comes to the realization that she actually does love Oscar and that their cultural differences aren't as big as she was making it seem. That doesn't really last for long, but at least she realized, you know, she was looking for issues that weren't really issues. Johan joins the party. Okay. This Mira is out here giggling and sniggling in ways I have not seen her giggle and sniggle around Mr. Oscar, okay? She says that it was really hard to let him go in the pods and it almost seems like she was having regrets. But my thing is, you're standing on this whole, I need somebody who's sure about me, whatever, whatever. So what would be the regret of letting Johan go? And then later on, we found out that even she is not sure if she wants to marry, who is she with? Oscar but is going to say yes at the altar anyways. Like that's what she wants to do. And I'm saying, isn't that what Johan was saying? You're doing this, mm. you're doing the same thing. And is Johan not Swedish? Cause wasn't her whole thing like, oh, I'm a, per I'm a foreigner. It's so hard to get along with the Swedish people and stuff like that. It would be the same with Johan if that's her perspective. She just has to admit that she does not like Oscar. It is what it is. Anyways, um, he says that he now knows that you're able to fall in love with somebody in a short amount of time. Unfortunately, it is too late. He says he wishes he was able to confess his feelings, but again, it is too late. As we know, Amelia and Lucas have consummated their engagement. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> um... And he's like, you know what? The intimacy is growing, it's developing, we're stronger than ever, boom. Carolina pops up. And Carolina, as we know, is more of Lucas's type, okay? This man again turned beat red and I was like, yo. <laughs> I don't mean to make this, this is not meant to make fun of white people, but it must be so frustrating to have your face tell on you all the time. For us black people, it's our facial expressions. For y'all, it's your complexion. It, because what do you mean I'm turning beet red because I'm, I'm flustered right now? I would lose my mind. So yeah, he's very clearly second guessing his decision because of course Carolina fits the aesthetic that he would like to be attached to more than Amelia does. So yeah, he does say that in the pods, he was going back and forth. He didn't actually mean to break things off with Carolina that she read into the gift of the necklace that he gave to Amelia. She read into it a little bit too much. So Carolina being the messy boots that she is goes and tells Amelia, no girl, why would you do that? I mean, I guess they're going to watch it back anyway, so, mm. but I was like, you could see Amelia's face drop and I felt so bad for her. You're thinking, oh my gosh, we're making strides in our relationship. We're getting more intimate. We're getting more comfortable. And then for this man to basically say, I only really said yes to you because the girl who I wanted to also consider shut the door on me. So yeah, I would have lost my mind. They talk about meeting Carolina and he claims that nothing has changed between them. He says that meeting Carolina had no effect on their connection whatsoever. However, in the confessional, he did admit that he's not sure about them. Interesting. Something about Lucas, he loves to save face and it's like, you're going to do more harm than good by keeping the truth away. Just tell her the truth. Be honest. Um, so Christopher has been saying that, um, no, did I say this? Oh yeah. I said this, that everything is perfect. She says that if they have sex and she climaxes that, that means that she's into him. Oh guys, this woman says, if I validate you too much, it's not going to have the same impact. Just say you hate him. Just say that you hate him. What do you mean if you give him too much validation, it's not gonna have the same impact? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. At that point, you hate me. You hate me. That's your justification for not wanting to give me any verbal 
assurance? No, absolutely not. Um, Ooh, and then things go, okay. Oh, so much was happening in this episode, guys. So she tells him, I think you're too nice, right? And so he says, at this point, I feel like I should just be the bad guy because obviously nice guys finish last. And so he's starting to get a little bit riled up. Why was this girl turned on by it? He's, he's starting to raise his voice a little bit. He's starting to stand his ground. And she's like, yeah, this is what I want. I need you to be more confident. I need you to stand up against me. And I'm like, girl, don't do that. Don't force somebody to be somebody they're not. Even though I do believe Christopher is kind of a doormat, I do think it is part of his nature to want to cater to his partner. It is part of his nature to want to be the giver in his relationship. So it's not completely out of his nature to do what he's doing, but it's definitely out of his nature to now be this aggressive guy just to appease Katya. Don't do that, Christopher. Don't lose yourself just to attain a spouse. It's not, it's not that deep, okay? Um, Sergio and Amanda have a conversation and because of how she handled this whole rumor situation, he's now saying, you know, you've changed me for the better. I can't believe I met somebody as amazing as you. Blah, 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 blah. All bullshit. It's all stupid. Like he... I'm fully convinced this rumor is, 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 has some kind of validity, some kind. Maybe the lady is not pregnant. Maybe she was pregnant and lost the baby. I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like this is, I feel like this is an attempt for Sergio to test the limits of Amanda. He was doing it at the proposal. He did it at the honeymoon. Now is another situation where it's not necessarily a good thing that's happening, but Amanda is yet again being so forgiving, being so loving, being so compassionate. He's trying to see how far he could push the limits. Girl, Amanda, you also need to stand up. You and Christopher, stand up, okay? Don't let these people walk over you just so you can be married. No, don't do that. Do not do that. So Chrysalie is down on cash and she says that she won't be able to contribute to the household for, well, she won't be able to contribute equally to the household for a few years. So she wants to leave whatever job that she's doing and become an entrepreneur. It's going to take a long time to actually get that up and running. So Rasmus is basically saying, Ooh, I was kind of thinking that we would do this whole 50, 50 thing. <laughs> you know, I like to travel. I like to do A, B, C, and D and that requires funds. So she's saying, well, we can split the bills, but does that mean monetarily? Like, um, the number or I meant to say numerically, does that mean the number is split in half or it's a percentage based arrangement? What do you guys think? If you're going to split bills with somebody, is it per percentage? Because I feel like that's the more fair way to go. You bring in whatever percentage we agree on of whatever your income is, because how fair is it for somebody making 20 K a year and somebody making a hundred K a year to be contributing the same amount of money in the household? That just doesn't make sense to me, but um, they seem to have not landed on a conclusion there. So as a surprise to absolutely nobody besides Christopher, <laughs> Katya decided to pack her bags in the dead of night, honey, and leave him by the morning. The man is going around like, where did she go? Where did she go? She left your ass. She left. You thought she was gonna stay? No. I think it's... I think it was insensitive, obviously, to just leave somebody without telling them. But I, yes, Christopher was being very delusional and it was clear to us that Katya was not invested. She did not voice herself enough. I think she could have been more upfront about where she stood with him and he would have been able to maybe course correct if he wanted to. He might have overdone it and that's another issue too. But to just leave without letting somebody know actually what the issue is, uncool, just very uncool. Her twin, Mira, honey, she looks about this close to doing the same. She's doing her work, right? And she says that she's an introvert. Oscar is very much not an introvert. He's out here in the kitchen, making the toast, trying to talk to her. Ooh, let's talk about Biden. Ooh, have you seen Elon Musk's spaceship crash? Ooh, the weather outside today. Honestly, if I'm trying to be in a workflow, that would have pissed me off too. And I'm an extrovert. So she's like, okay, I like my peace and quiet. Could you please do that? 
um, they had some kind of argument about it. I forget what the, what the details of the argument was, but she's finding yet another reason. So now she's like, okay, yeah, I realize that our cultural differences aren't the real issue. The real issue is our personalities don't match. Girl, pack up your bags and leave like your twin if this is how you're gonna act. Any situation she can make an issue, she will do it. And honestly, fine. If you don't find this man attractive, I get it. Interestingly enough too, her mom thinks that Oscar has the same mannerisms as her brother. So it's not like he's that different to her. Like she makes it seem like he's an alien and she's a human. And it's like, these worlds could never work together. Girl, bye. She makes it seem like Oscar literally looks like a tree monster. And I'm thinking to myself, like, the man is not ugly. Like, he's not. I can't even say he's unattractive. The man looks good. You just... Is there a, a version of, like, reverse xenophobia or something? Because, like, I feel like... Obviously, that's not a thing. But I feel like this is reverse xenophobia or so. I don't know. And then for Mira to make it such a big deal that she never dates outside of her um, culture, outside of her ethnicity, whatever. Why did you come in an experiment that is likely going to be majority Swedish people? And then if you found out these people are not who you would be comfortable with, why did you leave the pods with someone? Okay, let's move on because she pisses me off. Um, Amanda goes to Sergio's apartment. Sergio's apartment is a little, a little, it is a little, little, it looks like nobody lives there, but then he does. So yeah, that's interesting. It's very, um, empty, but that's kind of typical with guys' apartments. Their apartments tend to be more empty than a woman's apartment. The bedroom, it's in some kind of loft, like an elevated half floor. And so the ceiling is right about here to their heads. The bed is on the floor because you can't put it in a frame or anything. This woman is cackling. She finds it to be the funniest thing on planet earth. And don't get me wrong, it was funny. However, it clearly wasn't a joke to Sergio. And in as much as Sergio is very insufferable, I cannot stand him. I did kind of empathize because this is somebody's space. It's somebody's pride, I would assume. And so for you to just laugh in their face like that, it does come off insensitive. It wasn't her intention to be malicious, but it, it was just wrong time, wrong place, girl. Maybe when you guys have a better rapport, you could joke about it. Like, babe, remember, remember your apartment from two years ago? But right now... Girl, right now is not the time, okay? Rasmus is very excited to introduce Chris Lee to his friends. Friends, not so much excited, not at all. They are very skeptical. They don't believe that you can fall in love this quickly. They're wondering if Chris Lee is being an opportunist. They say that Rasmus is a big spender and they're literally asking her to her face, are you here to spend his money? Okay, she says that she plans on starting a new job in about four months or something like that. So she's gonna have her own resources. It's just gonna be low resources, that's all. The friends say that the reason why they have to interrogate is because Rasmus tends to keep his true emotions to himself for the sake of keeping a relationship going. Now, Chris Lee's under the impression that Rasmus is going to be absolutely honest with her. I don't know what kind of delusional world these people who go on Love is Blind live in, but girl, you just met this man. These friends know him. I would listen to what they're saying. Rasmus tends to hold his tongue and not actually tell you how he feels in a relationship. That's not a good thing. But she's like, no, 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 no. He would tell me. You don't know. You don't know that. You do not know that. So anyways... Um, Katya said that the reason why she left is because she needed an emotional reset. So leaving the apartment was something that, you know, was for her mental health, I guess you could say. Christopher is not pleased. He feels like he can't do anything right because he can't. She doesn't like you. End of story. There's nothing else to say. He's now starting to speak up about his disdain towards Katya's behavior. And a part of me wanted to say, see, this is why you don't date the nice guy because the nice guy tends to snap. But in this case, Katya did send him over the edge. 
So is the snap warranted? Just a little bit, just a little bit, okay? They both get emotional about uh, the breakup. Him, I believed. Katya, I did not. I was like, where did you find these tears, girl? Wow, signed up to be a Swedish actress because that was amazing. Chrysalis says that she had a tumultuous childhood. If memory serves me, I didn't write it down, but I think she said that her mom had her for the sake of being an, an emotional support. So throughout her childhood, she would be her mom's caretaker. I think the mom was a drunk when she was young, so she'd be sent to the store to run errands and all this stuff. Her mom had men in and out of the house. One of the men she did end up marrying, so Chrisley does consider that one person, her stepdad, as her only family. Unfortunately, he passed away. So in her mind, she doesn't have family. She's excited to be accepted by Rasmus's family. The mom was very open and very warm, very different response from the friends, which is interesting. She was like, you know what? I'll step in as a mom for you since you don't have a mom. And I was like, oh, this is cute. But I do wonder why there was such a big difference between how the friends received Chrisley and how the family received Chrisley. I don't know if they're going to get into that, but that was interesting to me. Um, I have here Oscar is delusional. <laughs> Oscar is delusional. He believes that Mira is not trying to change him. However, Mira will say, uh, you need to be less extroverted. You need to not wear this because I don't like it. Um, why are you dressed professionally when we're at home? Don't do that. You're too loud. You're too this, you're too that, you're too that. And instead of him acknowledging, mm, maybe she's trying to change me, he says, she's just trying to make me comfortable with things that I'm not comfortable with. So change you. It's so bad to the point where he wanted this blue suit for his uh, wedding and then he decided against it because Mira wouldn't like it. Like, uh, I get having to please your partner, but damn, you're going to lose yourself in this? Like, he's really going to lose himself in this marriage trying to keep up with Mira. Don't, no, don't do that. So Amelia is having concerns because Lucas is very stressed about this marriage. He's like, oh, let's focus on the guest list. Okay, no, the, the hotel, the venue, the, all this stuff. He's also starting a new job real soon. So that's on his mind. And she's thinking, if I'm going to invite my family from Finland, who has never come to Stockholm ever for anything about me, and then you say no at the altar, I'm going to be very embarrassed. Baby girl, I think he's going to say no. If you ask me, I think he's going to say no. What reason would he have to say yes to her? They don't really get along sexually. They don't really get along personality wise. He is leading this woman on. He, I don't, I don't know if you guys believe in their intimate times, but I just, I don't buy it. I even forgot to say this. After he met with Carolina, you know how just before he was raving about their sexual life progressing and they're so intimate now, whatever. After that, she even suggested a sex therapist because their se uh, sexual intimacy plummeted after seeing Carolina. She said it is so bad that if she walks around her apartment in lingerie, he has no desire to jump her bones. None. None. Girl, that man does not like you, okay? He doesn't like you. The men and women do these split bachelorette party things. Their parties go, um, their parties are way better than the American ones. I'll say that. First of all, it's like a three parter situation. The girls did, uh, they wrote a song or something. I don't even know what the song was saying, but it was sounding kind of lit. Honestly, I would learn Swedish just to hear what that song was saying. Somebody put the lyrics in the comments below. What were they talking about? And then um, they also went to a spa and then they went out like having a girl's night. The guys did this, not jacuzzi. What did the guys do? Sauna. And then I think they were on a yacht or something. And then they had a like dinner out with their friends. They were playing the newlywed game. One of the questions is what is your spouse's or your fiance's eye color? Rasmus thinks it's blue. According to Chrysalis, it's green. Don't ask me. I don't know. 
I don't know. I can't, I can't tell y'all's eye colors. All right. He got the worst score of everybody. The worst. Worse than Lucas, who can't even stand the sight of Amelia at this point. So she's now having this breakdown of like, oh my gosh, maybe we're not meant for each other. Like, I think she was about to pass out or something. And I remember when they were shopping for dresses, she said, there are red flags with him, but honestly, I accept him for all of it. And I'm thinking, hold on. What are these red flags that you are ignoring, Chrisley? What are they? She doesn't want to say. And so now she's having to break down over eye color? Can't be. There's something deeper there and I want them to get into it. I don't know if they will, but I need them to get into it. I think that's all I have. Yeah, that's all I have. So the next episode comes out on Friday and it's the weddings. So if I'm to predict who I think is going to get married... Oddly enough, Chrisley and Rasmus. Who else is in there? Oscar and uh, Mira, no. Well, they shouldn't. Nobody should. Nobody should. Sergio, oh! Sergio and Amanda, she might say yes, you know. Excuse me, if anybody's gonna say no, it's probably gonna be him. I, I dare him to, I dare him to say no. To Amanda, please. And then who's left? There's Oscar, Sergio, Lucas, and Rasmus. Okay, I think Rasmus and Chrisley might say yes. I think Lucas, he's gonna say no. I think Oscar is gonna say no. I think Sergio is gonna say no for the fact that he just wants to be in the power position, but I think, I think they might get married. So yeah, we'll have to see how this ends. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.